A certain St. Louis brewery has been associated with Clydesdale horses for years. Well, it seems that those horses actually got their start at the uniquely named town of Alexis. Robert Holloway and J.E. Alexander in 1870 founded the town. They at first were going to call it Alexandria, but found there was another town by that name. And at that time, the Duke of Alexis, who was heir to the Russian throne, was visiting my great-great-grandfather, Robert Holloway. And he had come here on a buffalo hunt. Robert Holloway then decided it would be very nice to call the town in honor of him, Alexis. And the Duke agreed that that would be all right with him. At the edge of the town once stood the home and farm of Colonel Robert Holloway. Besides helping name the town, he was one of the first importers and dealers of purebred Clydesdale horses. Uh, Robert Holloway lived in Kentucky. Uh, he was a professor in a military institute. Then he moved to this area where he eventually acquired 7,000 acres. He also worked in the political world and he introduced Stephen A. Douglas in the Lincoln-Douglas debates which were held at Knox College. And there was a, a Holloway raid that happened years ago which was reported in all of the national newspapers. Early one morning around 1880, just prior to the Colonel's yearly sale, his entire stock of 100 horses was stolen. Thugs were employed to overpower the guards and loaded the Clydesdales on a hired train that would take the animals to Chicago. Because of the noise, the Holloways were awakened. Arousing neighbors and friends, they led a group that barricaded the tracks and surrounded the train. After a few threats, the robbers surrendered. Today, Alexis is known as the American home of the Clydesdales. It's a story that's retold here at the old church, which has now become the Village Museum. The community has been very gracious and helpful in getting the museum started. We have war material, uniforms from the different wars that our people in this community participated in. In our living room, we have a baby buggy that is about 150 years old a pump organ, a quilting frame, spinning wheel, many things that are new to this generation. Also, we have some kitchen things that people aren't used to seeing. We have a pot-bellied stove, an iceless refrigerator. Well, it could be lowered into the ground to about six feet and had shelves to put things on and apparently worked very well. Also, we have early tools. Uh, I learned something myself uh, when I was given a chicken catcher. It's very interesting. It has a hook on the end, and you can hook the chicken's leg and catch the chicken easily. Among the displays is one case that holds the works of author Frazier Hunt, who purchased a local paper in 1913. He later went on to become a reporter for the New York Sun and the chief biographer for Douglas MacArthur but one of his first books caused quite a stir in this small town. And during the time he was here, he became well acquainted. He wrote a novel, Sycamore Bend, which is now, of course, out of print. Many people in the community were sensitive to the fact that they could identify the people that he used in the book, though he had given them fictitious names. Uh, we still enjoyed reading the book, but we didn't like to think that some of those people who had negative aspects to their characters were part of our community. It's all part of the history of this small town that includes a Russian duke, Clydesdale horses, a great raid, and a famous author. And if that's not enough, Alexis is listed in Ripley's Believe It or Not as the only town in the United States which is located in two counties and four townships.